Hi, everyone, and welcome to a new edition of Newsmakers. I'm Jerry Roberts. We are recording today on Thursday, June 27th, 131 days till Election Day, 100 days till uh, California's ballots go out, and eight hours until the most important presidential debate of our lifetime, which in my case is a long time. Anyway, Trump's winning 46.6 to 45.1, so get those visa applications into Portugal and Greece today. Uh, all right, I am joined uh, uh, gratefully, uh, <laughs> despite all my efforts to screw it up, by uh, our all-star panel of top local journalists, Josh Molina, uh, who reports on policy and politics for NewsHawk, Ryan P. Cruz, who covers City Hall uh, for The Independent, and Nick Welsh, who covers the world for uh, the Santa Barbara Independent. Thanks, guys, for coming. And we uh, we summoned everyone uh, to this special meeting because yesterday uh, was the long-awaited staff report from City Hall to the State Street Advisory Committee uh, about the future of the world. Uh, and we were, uh, let's see, we were invited to, uh, we should say in full disclosure, an off-the-record briefing on Monday at City Hall. Uh, and uh, really, we're ready to... Uh, uh, write the history of the world on that, but uh, the live stream didn't work, and I'd already been out of the out of the house once uh, this week. But then I think a couple of you other fellows tried to see it too. Anyway, they did make the recommendations. Um, it was a big day, and what happened, uh, Josh Molina? Because you were the only one that was there for the entire meeting. Well. Um... What happened is I'm still trying to figure it out, but I did the best job I could considering the deadline. They essentially held their big reveal, the State Street Advisory Committee meeting, where they were showing us renderings and suggested uses, essentially block by block, block, by block from the 400 to the 1300 block. And so this was supposed to be the moment where they were going to walk the public through what the architects had come up with, what the staff had come up with, based off of feedback from previous meetings. So, so just to orient people, so 400 to, to, to 1300 is what? Ortega to Victoria or? Who's that... there was to um, uh, Sola. Okay. Like the Arlington Theater, essentially, all, all that way. So this was going to be the big deal. And they've come up with a plan, which includes an arts district, an entertainment district, a Delaguerra district, and they've come up with a plan basically from the 900 block on to have uh, one way travel on the 900 block and then uh, on a vehicle travel. Vehicle travel. And then as you get up to the 1200 block, they're going to have two, they wanted to have two lanes of traffic and the 1300 block. And so this is an effort to sort of appease all the people who want cars to come back on State Street. Much of the plan is carless, much of the plan is curbless, and what they want to do below the 900 block, which is about Carrillo, is basically flatten it out, make it mostly pedestrian focused, bicycles would be allowed in separated bike lanes, and they basically are saying, you know, there is a little bit of room for a, a trolley, uh, pedicabs, uh, uh, I think they called it experiential transit. And so they were revealing all of this stuff. But as a practical matter, Jerry, the meeting was shortened. So they started at three. They said, we have to be out of here by 550. And it wasn't enough time for the committee to be able to actually talk about what was recommended. And there are some conspiracy theories. Maybe it was by design. Maybe they did not want to come to a vote that day. But the meeting was very tightly controlled by Dave Davis, the chair of the committee. So you had this thing where you had a presentation and then they broke up into uh, little focused groups at tables. Public was not allowed. They could yeah, just- Yeah, that, like, that like, photo you ran today of people trying to listen over the tables was very telling, I thought. Yeah, they could just, they were excluded, essentially. Uh, they, they were told several times, this is not for the public, but you may wander and watch. That took an hour and then they come back and they give a report out and it was strategically placed so that the people who were doing the report out 
they kind of weeded out all the like naysayers on the committee. So it was basically a, a very sanitized summary of what the group said. And then uh, there was some public comment and then we were done. And so they're going to come back, I don't know, July, August? July 9th, meeting. I think is the day I heard. What is it, Nick? July 9th? I believe July 9th. I mean, what it was like, it was like you go to a restaurant and there's this 15 page menu and you get to look through it to see what you want for an appetizer and a main course. But you don't really get to order anything. So the ordering will be coming on July 9th. And um, I think um, conspiracy theories aside, I think uh, as, a, as a method of mastication and marination of massive quantities of information, breaking it up makes sense because there's just so much stuff there to absorb and think about. They, if they had tried to come to a real decision, it, it would have been a complete mess. Um, well, yeah. I mean, how, what was it? What did we figure out? It was like 70 pages of slides or 70 slides or something yeah. like that. Um, you know, it's a lot, of, a lot of information. And, you know, what ended up happening is a lot of a lot of public comment. You know, the, the committee didn't get to to speak on it. Um, but the gist of this plan is the central district will be pedestrian uh, focused and it'll kind of gradually go to traffic. So you'll have some streets with one way and then some streets at the ends with two way. Um, but what we ended up seeing is a lot of, of public comment that is kind of showing that general public is leaning towards a pedestrian friendly. And some people were even asking to do all car free. And I don't think they will do our, all car free at the end of the day, but that's what we kind of came out of the meeting with since since the committee wasn't able to actually discuss and give their two cents. It was more of, of seeing how the public felt. And, you know, there was a lot of people uh, su supporting, you know, what State Street is now, the, the kind of pedestrian friendly, you can walk and you can bike there. Uh, it's invigorated the area. And there is still a lot of bring the car back people, especially on social media. They're, they're very loud, you know, they're very opinionated and, and they remember how it was before. And as, as opposed to go away. people who are very quiet and unassuming. <laughs> yes. We are to follow up uh, what you just said, right? I mean, I was struck by um, the fact, I mean, there was only about 22 people from the public who spoke and about half of them we're with Strong Town Santa Barbara, which is this new group that most people don't know about. Strong Town Santa Barbara. It's a yeah. Go ahead. And they're very you know uh, you know uh, smart growth, new urbanists, bicycle, bicycle, bicycle. We don't need any cars um, uh, on State Street, and it's sort of a betrayal that they're even talking about it. I was struck that there was nobody there really testifying about. It why we need cars, and for all the hubbub that you hear from Randy Rouse, the mayor, and Kevin, uh, you know, over at the, whatever the name of his bar is, um, the car contingent was notably silent. They were not there. Um, Maybe the car contingent was one I'm going to do it on Zoom. <clears throat> there was, so I will say, there was, if you if you saw, there's a fat stack, it was about 100 pages long of of public comment that was submitted for prior. So I I, I read I missed that. You're there right. Any of them in there. Um it was hard to to comment. I will say you either had to go on Zoom and there was only one person that was able to stay and actually do it through Zoom or you could go to, to the to actual place on, on Wednesday at 3 p.m. which was not really easy for everybody to get to. Right. All right. So let's break it down a little bit. So from the 300 to the 600 block is the so-called entertainment district, which is basically the bars, right? Bars. Right. So, so what what is the tran the the transit mix there that they're calling for? They're essentially saying we want it to be uh, pedestrians and bikes. Uh, only. No only, cars. Uh, essentially, I mean, again, the plan is complicated, but they are saying that. There are times when they would make it bike free or walk your bikes, so whatever term, on uh, like the five and six hundred blocks because maybe during fiesta or big events uh, when there's a lot of people downtown. But primarily, most days it would be pedestrians and bikes, and uh, that's sort of the the feel that a lot of people want 
for the whole street. But, but this is the say that. I think, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but the three and four hundred blocks, I think public safety, the fire department in particular, wanted two way traffic on the three and four hundred blocks um, for emergency uh, purposes. It was a two two way on the uh, three hundred as it is now, and then on the four hundred they need at least one way. Okay, so they can get uh to the other side of town. Right. And, and right now, four hundred is two way, and five hundred and six hundred. Let me just say something here, Jerry, before uh, we get too into the technical details, and I'll leave that up to the three of you because that's not my yeah, deal. Because you I know, mean, technical details is really what I do. <laughs> well, it's not what I do, but let let me just. Here's the thing, okay, this is a generational battle, and um, I met some of the strong town Santa Barbara people last night. Um, they're very well spoken, they're passionate, they believe very strongly the street should be without cars. And they uh, know everything. <laughs> you know what? They're and really smart. I the, mean, the, they really are smart. Yeah, you know, the, the, I have a lot of respect for the people that I talk to, okay? So, but here's the thing, Jerry, is that... Um, it's a generational disconnect, you know, in their minds, they think that, you know, what, what the backdrop of what Ryan has in, you know, his screen there, that that's like life. And that is life for them and some people. That is what life is for a certain amount of years that you exist in this world. I think the pro car people are not being heard and they're being dismissed as these sort of like, anti-climate change conservatives who want things the way it was 50 years ago. And I don't think that that's fair because I think what's happening is there are legitimate reasons, notwithstanding, you know, Nick, who's, you know, very, very agile and can ride bikes, you know, uh, very fast downtown. There's a contingent of people who are not able to enjoy that experience and they want to be able to drive downtown and cruise and look at the stores and park. And I don't think any other class of people would people be so dismissive of them to say that your perspective is irrelevant and you need to change. Like, I don't think we would do that. So the problem that we're seeing here is that Strongtown Santa Barbara is they're right, right? Like we, we believe that that is true. But what do you do about everyone else? Do you just say that if you're of a certain age, of a certain ability that you aren't allowed to go down State Street. And if you are, you're going to have to use public transit, which, by the way, is not great in this town. You're going to have to take a, 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 a an Uber or you're going to park far away and walk. I think we need to be careful. Not this to is why they invented ice. ice flows. Don't you know? This was <laughs> the, same, the same thing we saw in COVID. We shouldn't you know, villainize or demonize people deserve to die. Yes. People who have a different lifestyle than us and the idea that they're the only ones who spoke there were pro car people i'll just say it who spoke at the very beginning um during the general public comment and dave davis allowed them the opportunity to do that uh so they wouldn't have to stay till the very end so there were some people who who okay. were pro car but it was the minority and based off of that meeting i would say the, the power brokers in that room are probably feeling like uh, we might want to think about having this plan be curbless up and down the street based off of the feedback you heard from the people in that room. I don't know that they're the majority of Santa Barbara. I know they're the majority who filled out the survey. I know they're the majority who speak, but I don't think they're majority of people. in. I don't know that they are. There's most people you know, like anything, they're not paying attention and they don't really feel the need to go to a meeting or fill out a survey. Yeah, but I think I think this is a time where if you feel strongly about cars coming back to State Street, you have to come to these meetings. If the bike people are coming to the meetings, it, it's not enough to be, I'm not, I'm not tied into what's going on. I think everybody knows what's the future of State Street is kind of up in the air. So if you want Wait, cars to ahead. come back, then now is the time to come and say and fill out these surveys. Cause if it's not coming out and it is a generational divide and they're planning for the future, then they well, have I, to keep in mind, you know, what's I mean, great, great respect for you, Ryan. But um, you know, if you're like a 40 year old 
parent with kids, you're not going to the Cabrillo uh, Pavilion at three o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon. You've got so many other things that are more important than worrying about government wonks trying to decide the future. Well, I understand that, but I, I'm saying, you know, the this idea to bring cars back, I want to hear the economic, I want to hear more thought out responses so we can cover it, you know, as in our stories, so we can put a good argument in our stories instead of, you know, finding on next door uh, or on Facebook, these long back and forth arguments that aren't really thought out. And it's really kind of sounding like we just want, there's, there's the idea that people are going to drive and get out of their car on state street and shop at, at a store. And I just don't think I used to drive up and down state street all the time and it doesn't happen. Now I walk up and down state street, state street all the time. I have a grandma that can't walk very far. And, and yes, I understand that. And and we need to have a, a on state street. So did you buy her an electric bike, Brian? <laughs> no, no, not yet. But a walker. She's got she's got a walker, and and John, we have Nick, to Nick, deal with that. But Nick's... but they are going to try to do a micro transit for that. And I know that's not the ideal thing. Experiential but transit. Experiential yeah. transit. I like. There's got to be a way to yeah. move people up and down the action. I feel like that was a really good thing to say. They stress that they're going to have that, but it sort of got poo poos by some of the panelists. So it's going to take 45 minutes to get from the bottom to the top. And um, it's more of a scenic rather than a utilitarian device. But what I was sort of struck by is the dividing line from the very beginning to the very end was and remains uh, bicycles on State Street, e-bikes. Um, and again, as somebody who is a nature bicycle rider, uh, I would say if I thought the absence of cars was going to save State Street, I, I would be all against them. If I thought, uh, you know, bringing cars back was going to save State Street, I'd be for it. I don't think cars are really the magic wand that are going to save or destroy the future or enliven State Street. And I think the real trick that nobody has really gotten into, at least that I haven't heard, maybe I missed it, is how is it what transit system works best with this idea of downtown as being saved by housing? Housing is the new driver for State Street. You know, when we were at the Room 15 meeting, they were talking about envisioning thousands of new housing units. Right. And, and that's a very big number compared to what we have now. And you think, how do you make that work? And what kind of a transit mix? Particularly given that most of those houses won't have any parking. And they don't, yeah, they won't need to have parking if they're close to downtown. And if they're going to have car free housing, they need it. They needs need those electric bikes. Structure, yes. They, they, right. you know, they need to have that. Um, so I, I, you know, I think, Josh, your point, though, like it's three in the afternoon. Um, I was struck by how many people weren't in the room. And I was struck by, you know, this, you know the homogeneity of the people who were. And I was really moved that the Songtown people were there in such force because in Santa Barbara, you know, what had been missing is it's sort of the youth energy and they bring it in spades. They seem sometimes a little bit like they're staring at the sun, but they bring that energy and that passion and they are really smart people um, and thoughtful. So I thought it was good that they showed up in the numbers they did. All right, you know I, I just want to finish real street. quick. I, I just want to finish real quick walking through what the actual thing is for <laughs> those who didn't make it to the pavilion. So we, we talked about the three to 600 block is the entertainment district. Then 700 block to 900 block is the so-called De La Guerra district. And that's pedestrians only, correct? Or, or also bikes? That's pedestrians only. Okay. Is that what you got? Yeah, that would they're yeah. leaning towards pedestrian only in that area, that central district. Whatever so my story ready. says, Jerry. What's that? Because I don't remember what my story says is true, but today I don't remember what it was. But I did right. make it accurate last night. And then the one thousand to thirteen hundred block, the so-called arts district, has in the recommendations uh, one-way traffic. Correct. One way, one way north. And All then right. on the, the thirteen hundred block, here. two ways. Yeah. What they're trying to do, I mean, the, the bigger picture is they're trying to 
configures the mobility so they can bring the sidewalks on both sides out further into the street so that uh, businesses can take more advantage of the sidewalk space. That way they can get rid of the parklets and the whole parklet issue. That, and that's one of the big things that came out of it too. There won't be any parklets. It will no be parklets. out dining, but it won't be as it is now. And another big thing that, you know, we they kind of mentioned offhand was parades. Um, you know, no major parades on State Street. Uh, well, they the, said, I thought they said Solstice could be there. Smaller ones, they said, you know, they could they could think about it and, you know, definitely not any big ones and definitely not equestrian going forward. And that, no, they're you know, going to lose that, the equestrian. That'll make no, a couple no people fiesta. mad. And that's, you know, that's another thing that's kind of, there's a lot of, of things that weren't talked about at the meeting because they're talking about specifically State Street. But part of this whole master plan includes housing and includes, you know, a whole list of other things that are going to come in to, to, which, which is interesting, Nick, and, and you raised that point and you raised it in the meeting too, because I don't believe that's a word that's um, mentioned in the present day. I mean, it's almost exclusively about aesthetics and traffic, the, the plan is presented. It doesn't really address that issue of housing or where the housing is going to be. And obviously, no, you know, there's a way, no way to know that. It's a, it's a known unknowable. Right, that's the such thing that takes place on stage left. Um, we don't see the housing. Um, and, and that is, if, to the extent there is a, you know, uh, plutonium that's going to, you know, drive this nuclear power reactor, it's going to be new housing downtown. Yeah. And that's going to bring, bring families and workers, et cetera. And how that's going to happen has yet to be worked out. Yeah. Um, okay. And, and j just again, so people understand it, because... I mean, I don't think there's anybody that's tried to compromise on bikes more than me. But uh, the, the I, I think an important point, they're going to have designated bike lanes, which are separate from all the 75-year-old shuffling old men, correct? Right. Okay. And and signage and... But who's going to enforce that? Not that's the big. That's the big question. And and if they're planning on this in the central district, where it's most mostly pedestrian-friendly... On some of the busy times like Fiesta or summer months or weekends, it'll be no bikes allowed. So who, how are they going to enforce that and who will enforce that? That's a big question mark. But right. we know so, the police really do not want to be yeah. stuck right. in that job. They have other fish to fry. They don't want to be chasing after 13-year-olds on rad bikes. All right. So no, no parklets. No parades or almost no parades. You know, I, I'm a little bit mixed on that one because in the meeting we had, I thought I, it was, there was definitely not going to be a fiesta parade, but I thought solstice and the Christmas, Christmas parade, parade would be okay. Yeah, they said this okay. one. Yeah, well, well, really like the the one. holiday parade, uh, <laughs> newsmakers. Um, so, so they're only going to discriminate against the horses. Is that right? Right. No. Okay. Wait till, wait till the horse lady gets a taste of that. Okay. Um, all right, no parklets, I'll be right uh, there. no no fiesta parade. I don't want to misspeak, and um, basically no cars, except in the one thousand in the arts district in in the upper state arts. Well, there yeah. be cars at the lower end and the lower. The yeah, end. At each well, that's end a recommendation. A, a one way block, and then there'll be a two way traffic block on each end. But it, it should right. be noted that strong towns. And some of the people who reported out of their workshop, out of their little discussion groups, said, "You know, there we don't want cars at all. The right, whole, we go thing the whole should way, four hundred to thirteen hundred. Yeah. So, all right. Well, let's talk about the politics because what I, you I, gotta, I hate to do is I got to go to a meeting. I'm sorry, all right, brother. Thank you. you. Thanks for checking in. I'm sorry. Yeah. See ya. Yeah. See ya. Hey. All right. So let me talk. Let me ask you about the politics. There's what fifteen people on this committee. So the first threshold vote will be on the committee. So what is your sense? And and I know it's still early and we don't really know, but you know, what's your sense of where they are uh on this vehicle issue, which seems to have emerged as the the biggest uh, conflict or uh, area of conflict. Do, well, do, well, I, I, have I, wish they would, I wish they would have had a time to comment because we would have a little bit better of an idea because we were able to to talk to some of them one on one afterwards and you know ask what do you think we're headed in the right direction? You know, Dave Davis, who is, you know, has been adamant about this having a, a vision and, and having an actual 
idea of something we could hold on to. He said that we're headed in the right direction. Um, and it seems like most people are accepting that the central area will be pedestrian focused. But, you know, I don't know. It's going to be a big discussion when on this July 9th when they all get to say their two cents, because I'm sure a lot of them are going to have a lot of strong opinions um, and, and you know, suggestions on how to change this uh, this framework they have going on now. What do you think, Josh? Well, you know, the, the committee itself is split. They, they It's 15 members, a couple of alternates. It's too big. I'm sorry. It's too many people. Uh, there's a big business contingent side. I mean, Kristen Miller from the Santa Barbara Chamber of Commerce, South Coast, you know, she put out her own plan or the chamber did. And which she's is not, which is not all that different, right? She wants more uh, two-way vehicle traffic, you know, right. and so... Um, so there's going to be a lot of back and forth. I think what Dave Davis did, which was strategically, if you're playing chess with this, very well done, was that he created these focus groups so that it could weed out, weed out the naysayers. It could weed out those people who have concerns about what staff is recommended, because Dave also picked the representatives who were going to talk at the public meeting. And some of the people who talk aren't even on the committee. Tim Timmy Bolton gave the summary for his group, and he's a city of Santa Barbara employee. And so that was interesting. And so you didn't even see like the actual committee members the whole time speaking. And so I think they're split. I think there's going to be a discussion on it. And the big thing is paying for it. I know that's a concern for some of the committee members because we're talking about I don't know, but millions of dollars in infrastructure. Oh, yeah, probably stuff. tens or hundreds. Flatten out the road and do all of this stuff. And so, you know, I'm sure we'll be passing another sales tax increase eventually or something, you know. After to this one this. goes down, yes. Uh. Something. And that so that, you know, they're doing it in tiers and you can't tackle that um, now. They're just looking at if we could. But, yeah, I, I there, how to pay for it is also on the minds of some of the committee members. Right. And then the politics, of course, ultimately, it's going to go to the city council, um, you know, whether that's the present city council or any changes that get made in November, unclear. But I, I don't know. It seems like there's maybe three votes for sure on the city council to bring back cars. Randy, I think Eric has been, uh, you know, vocal about certain areas, certain blocks, at least. Um and uh, what Alejandra's kind of in there too. So, well, you know, is there four votes for cars on the city council? I mean, well, well that's gonna that's gonna be a close one. And what what also might happen is, you know, right now they they have their monthly interim uh, operation plan meetings, and you know, we got a couple months where they might try to 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 bring cars back a little bit earlier, and we don't know if that might happen. So, yeah, when it gets to city council, it's definitely gonna be the big next step. And, and when that will happen, you know, they're hoping to get a, a first draft around here in the fall time. And then you, you know, they're going a road show to all the review boards to see what they think. And then they'll finally go to city council and that could be next year. Who knows? Right. There, and then there is some, sorry, there is some, go ahead. you know, there is some sourcing out there that suggests that, that perhaps the mayor will want to do like in the meantime, Let's just reopen it to cars and put it up for a vote on the council. He's tried to do this in before. It has not passed, but it's an election year. So he would have Eric, probably. He would have Alejandra, probably, because Alejandra Gutierrez has tied herself to Randy Rouse during her reelection campaign. Um, and so there would be a fourth vote if they were to do that um, that could happen in August. Who knows? It so may who would that be, Mike? Jordan? It would be Mike, you know, and I don't want to pull the and curtain back too much on their strategy, but, you know, if it happens in late August, it might be more likely than if it happened after, in August. After filing is closed uh, for, for to get on the ballot, you mean? Yeah, and, and if that were to go forward, you know, that would be a, a big blow to this pedestrian-free idea because it would be hard to undo it, a little bit harder to undo it once, you know, cars are back on State Street and people... You know, the support is going to come back up for that in a big way. As they used to say in the Nixon White House, once the toothpaste is out of the tube, <laughs> it's hard to 
It's hard to get it back. All right. Speaking of money, I do want to ask you this. I'm looking at the slide uh, on page 17, uh, where we have been. So they, 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 they mentioned all the meetings, 15 meetings, 16 community events, 6,000 surveys, district and urban design frame. I don't see where it says $800,000 for a consultant on here. We, we've sort of just, what, buried that into the past? And, and, you're, and you're talking staff time and everybody else's time. for All these meetings have been really long, drawn out meetings and people are getting in the weeds. And that's why we're barely at where we're at today. Um, it's very a very touchy subject and a big, big, big project to take on. But the, the the consultants were nowhere to be seen in, 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 at this point, right? It's like we 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 flushed eight hundred thousand dollars down a rat hole, and now we're going to forget about it. Well, it's it's um, I don't know, um, Ryan, you, you could jump in here, but like I I think what has happened is that they they approved eight hundred grand, but they're paying it sort of installments, and then after the first round of meetings, they were like. The public was like, we don't like any of this. So that's when they brought in the architects, Anthony Grumbine and his group. The volunteer to architects. To do something local. So I think what's happening now, and by the way, no mention of these consultants at this meeting. That's what I mean. It's like, oh, they never exist. History and I, I don't think they're going to get their full 800000 And last time I checked, this was earlier this year, they had paid about half of it. So I don't know if those people are going to try to like, you know, get involved or walk away. Because when they when they approve these contracts, it's not to exceed this amount. And so it's possible they just cut them loose or have them focus on the behind the scenes technical stuff. Uh, but if you're in that room now, it's a very locals driven thing now. Like, I mean, everyone who's anyone in the architectural sort of world is, is there. So, so yeah, they, they, they kind of put the, the consultant on the back burner and they're trying to work this with their local people. All uh, right, you mentioned the architects, which I, I guess is kind of a volunteer group. Um, was Cass there? Cass Enberg? Whatever happened to that plan? Yeah, Cass Ensberg was there. She was in the audience. Um, I did talk to her. Anthony Grumbine, who's leading the architectural group, who gave several presentations yesterday, uh, kind of gave a nod to her to say, you know, kind of what we have approved is similar to what she had suggested. Uh, you know, she's an architect. She's been very critical of the city's process. Right. Uh, she she's very much an advocate for, uh, you know, her generation for people with mobility issues with for seniors, and saying we should reopen this to cars until we finish the master plan. So she so there was an acknowledgement of her, but and, and I will say, you know, more so than Kristen Miller, who's the CEO of the chamber. Ryan, I love, I mean, you saw this, like she tried to talk at the meeting. She tried to offer her comments and Dave Davis cut her off and said, no, 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 we're not going to lose focus. We're staying on track. And I thought like as a reporter, and I guess well, we'll that tells you something about how much they care about business. Well, as a reporter, I'm like, I'm here to report what people have to say. I guess they'll do it in July, but I don't think it's a good look anytime you're. Yeah, there was there was a few times member. where you know a few of the committee members wanted to to add on when they were doing their group report outs because um, they had a rep one representative for each of the three groups say this is what we talked about and you know it it seemed like there was a few more committee members that wanted to add a one or two more things after that and Dave at that point we were already over time um, and he, I know he was trying to keep it tight. Oh, Ryan just froze. Uh, all right, Josh. You and I. Yeah, no, yeah. We're on I know. Here while Ryan Ryan's, tries to get unfrozen. I mean, Ryan's correct. Dave was trying to keep it on track, but I just, that's because they had to be done at 550. And I'm just like, why? Why are you going to have a meeting and try to cram it in two two hours and 50 minutes? Meeting, just, like I said, you know, it was very much, so everybody's going to have their their time to, the members had to leave and they still had a quorum, but they, am I freezing? No, no, you, but you were You're back. like you were in a, a Bugs Bunny cartoon. No, oh, Alvin and the Chipmunks. It was like really fast. <laughs> but you're back now. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me ask uh, real quick. We got to get out. But um, Ryan, you had uh, the piece about the downtown improvement district, which is uh, kind of related somewhat to this, I would say. Jerry, Jerry Ryan, I have an 11 o'clock meeting. All right, brother. Yeah. All so right. Thank have you. Have a great day. Thank you. Take care. So, Ryan, right. we. They did approve it, correct? 
they did approve it and this was a, a kind of self vote so they they let they sent out 543 ballots and that's all the parcels in the district and of course some, some of the parcels uh, are owned by the same owner so is, is the definition is their definition of downtown the same as it is in this plan in other words, from the 300 to the 1300 block? I don't know exactly because it extends out a little further, uh, you know, wide. It uh, goes out to, to, I think, Santa Barbara Street. It's 37 okay. square blocks. Okay. Um, and in total, I think there was there was a 57% of the ballots were returned. It was about 300 ballots. And the way they, they measured it was weighted system. So, you know, the bigger your property, the more your vote counted. So it ended up that you know, the Going majority of the colonial days, you get to vote <laughs> based on how much land you own. Yeah, that's and cool. then the vote was, you know, if the if the opposition failed to get a majority. So if the opposition failed to meet that 50 percent and the opposition came up to around 40 percent of the total assessment dollars. So it didn't reach that. And, you know, it's kind of big that the that's the a big deal are agreeing to, you know, tax themselves in, in a sense and and put the money towards a big pot that everybody can, can kind of get the benefit of. Right. Now, of course, there's some of the people that were in opposition, you know, um, SEMA corporation, a big property owner down there uh, was, was really yes, for now. against it. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's going to go forward and there might be a legal challenge to it, but right now it's going to go forward starting All next right. year. Okay. A lot going on. We got the housing, we got the, Improvement okay. district, and of course, uh, we have the what is the Grand Paseo? Is that uh, the is Grand that Paseo? Is what they're going to try to call that central? You know that that heart, that heart of the downtown, that couple blocks, two or three blocks. All right. Okay. Well, I just my bottom line. It, it strikes me as they tried to please everybody a little bit in this, and I'm not. It, it's that's what it is right now. We'll see. You know if. Then how do these negotiations go if those one ways turn into two ways or if one of those one ways turns into an extra block of pedestrian only? I think that might change and and how this uh, downtown trolley system will work on State Street or not trolley. They're calling micro transit uh, how to get people up and down the actual State Street. The trolley will go on Chapala and Anacapa around. All right, Ryan, before you check out and I'm um, left here talking to myself as I usually <laughs> am. Uh, I do want to say, though, I think. You know, I have had a very favorable first impression of the new uh, city administrator, Kelly McAdoo. And, you know, she was in the both of the meetings that we've had over there. Um, yeah. As far as like transparency towards the media and yes, uh, openness with, you know, meeting with us and, and laying it out on the table and telling us, you know, what they have, what they're working with and being, you know, for the most part, pretty honest of you know, we know a lot of behind the scenes already and when what they're telling us to our face lines up with that, you know, that's that's really great. And Kelly has been so far so good. And she, you know, from Hayward to here is, is a is a big step and it's a different different community, but she's really bought into where we're at and what the people in, in the community kind of want. And you get the idea, you know, she really wants to move stuff along. Come on. You know? Yeah, you yeah know? especially Let's with, with the street, I, some of these things have been dragging and it's time time to get get something going. And it seems like she's not afraid to make uh, some people mad because I think at the end of the day, uh, you have to things go forward. Not everybody in Santa Barbara is going to be happy. You know, it's a very diverse city. Um, there's going to be people mad about something. All right. Well, very good. Well, let's leave it there. Um uh, Ryan P. Cruz and in abstention, Josh Molina and Nick Welsh. Thank you uh, all for joining us. Thank you for watching. And uh, we will see you uh, next time on Newsmakers.